Good evening, I'm Donna Bush with your CID TV News Brief and Weather Forecast. Progress to ensure the Cayman Islands anti-money laundering countering the financing of terrorism and proliferation of financing regimes are compliant with international standards reached a significant milestone in late October as the observation period by the Financial Action Task Force wrapped up. Elizabeth Lees, the National Coordinator for the government's anti-money laundering steering group, tells us more. We had a mutual evaluation report that was published in March 2019 and now we're responding to the various recommendations in that report. So we respond to those and then there'll be a decision on whether or not we've made sufficient progress and that's a decision taken by the Financial Action Task Force. So the final decision will be made at the Financial Action Task Force plenary in February 2021. And you can watch the entire interview with Elizabeth Lees on the CIG Television YouTube channel and on our broadcast channel as well. Meantime, school zone lights on Kim and Brack were replaced in recent months. The speed warning lights have been replaced by, by the island's four schools, which are West End Creek and Spot Bay Primary, as well as the Lehman Scott High School. Now, motorists on Kim and Brack will see the flashing lights before school starts in the morning, during lunch hours, and when school ends each day. RCIPS officers are warning drivers on Kim and Brack against speeding in these school zones or risk being prosecuted. Speaking of the Brack, last weekend was a busy one with some soccer matches taking place between players from Grand Cayman and Kim and Brack. Coach Ernie Gilly Seymour tells us more about the series of games. Well, it was a good game. Um, I, 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 we have a lot of young players in our squad. They also have a lot of young players. Players I've seen over the years grow up from the soccer camp and now playing with the men's team. So it was a really even competitive game. We always come to the Cayman Brack. Our sports club, Cayman Athletic, is one, we actually were one of the first clubs that came to the Cayman Brack to play a competitive match against Cayman Brack. And whenever um, Coach Mitchum invited us over, we were always um, welcome to come, you know. And we love coming to the Brack to compete against the Brack kids to help them with also with their development and our own development. Now the games ended in neither team scoring with nil all. Moving now to the forecast for the Cayman Islands, it calls for overcast skies with scattered showers and thunder. Showers will be heavy at times leading to a flooding of low-lying areas. The winds are from the east to southeasterly at 25 to 30 knots with higher gusts. Seas will be rough with wave heights of 6 to 8 feet with higher swells, especially along the east and south coast. A marine warning remains in effect. Meantime, the synopsis calls for intermittent showers along with fresh to strong southeasterly winds and rough seas, which are expected across the Cayman Islands area over the next few days as Tropical Storm Eta moves across Nicaragua and Honduras. Radar images show scattered showers in and around the Cayman area, which are moving towards the west to southwest. Remember, for the latest in weather, you can go online to weather.gov.ky or they have an app that you can download, which is CINWS. And that ends today's news brief here on CIG Television. I'm Donna Bush, wishing you a safe and, of course, a wonderful night. Join Donna Bush weekdays at 6 p.m. for the CIG TV News Update. Get the latest on what's happening in government on a daily basis. News update first at 6 p.m.